Okay, for the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you uh, quickly how to set up uh, QTractor and uh, LMMS as an instrument platform. Step-by-step, uh, -step we'll put together the uh, routing, and we'll just create a channel of uh, MIDI data uh, and create an instrument and show you how that uh, wires together. And we'll also turn on the video for sync. Uh, so that you can see how that all works. So um, we'll open up uh, QTractor now. I've, I've already opened up a session. I haven't done anything with it except uh, for one thing, and you'll see this later, and I don't want you to be confused by it. Uh, but I do have, um, if you hit F8, you can open up your um, uh, transport connections here. I have... Um, a, an issue here with making this tutorial. I need to be able to capture the uh, what I'm saying, and I also need to be able to capture QTractor's output, and I can't do that from the system. Uh, so what I have is I have QTrack connected to Pulse Audio Jack Source, and I also have the capture connected to that as well uh, for the microphone. This is just so that you can hear what I'm saying. So ignore the fact that the QTractor is connected to the pulse audio uh, jack source. That is not something that is essential uh, to what we're doing. What you do want is you want QTractor to be um, connected to the system playback. So you want the master output to come to the uh, system playback. So what I'm going to do is we'll select QTractor uh, and we'll select uh, system and we'll make sure that that's connected. So if we take a look here we should see that the master out is coming to playback uh, one and two there, uh, and that should that should do it. So um, Q Tractor is coming to the system now. The next thing that we're going to do, I'll close this out, is we're going to uh, open up a session of LMMS. So I'll click on the LMMS tab, and I'm going to move this to the second screen. I'm using a dual screen here, so you can see things a little bit better. Uh, this is how I would typically work uh, like this. Now you could layer things so that uh, windows are open in the background. You don't need to be looking at LMMS most of the time, uh, but I like to keep it up here and then I can also put my video over here as well and uh, see it off on one screen. Um, before we even mess with LMMS, let's open up the video. So we need to open up a video player and we're using XJDO uh, for this. So we're going to right click to open up a file. Open file and we'll navigate to where it's at. So our file is in here, video, and it's this one, picture composite. So this is the whole movie, and you will note that it does not play audio back um, from this movie. It is scalable just by using the scroll bar. You can scale it and it will keep the aspect ratio. If I right click on this, I can also set the display uh, to stay on top, so window on top. That way no matter where I'm clicking, the video will always be on top and I can just minimize it. Um, if at this point I hit play, automatically, um, because this by default is set to sync with jack, if I right click I can see that it's set to sync with jack transport, uh, my QTractor is set up to, uh, mas to be the master of the jack transport as well. So if I hit play, uh, my movie will play, but you notice that you don't hear the audio. When we get to the point where we have the uh, alarm clock, you won't hear it, you won't hear any of the sound effects, nothing like that. Um, Xjetio is not going to play the audio, and that's just as well because we would really like to be able to see what's going on visually where the sound effects are at. If we go to the folder, the project folder, and we go to um, meeting, picture composite, this is the audio. So what I did is I made my video and then I made a separate audio track as well. So the video actually has the audio with it, but then I rendered out, uh, the, I took that video and I dropped it into Audacity and then I rendered out from that uh, a separated audio track WAV file, which you can do. Uh, and I'm just going to drag and drop this in here. So we'll just set it back to the beginning. And there you go. So it, dr it drops right in there, right where we want it to be. Um, and then I can uh, go back here and change my uh, track properties any way that I want. So black for the dark color, red for the light color. Hit OK. Uh, probably should name that movie sound effect, uh, effects. Okay. And we'll hit OK. So now I know what this is and I can just leave this 
uh, at the top as a reference. Uh, very quickly, controls in QTractor, if I want to uh, zoom in and zoom out, I just hit control shift and use my scroll bar and it will zoom in and out. If I want to move the playhead, I can hit shift and click, left click, and the playhead will go along and you can see that the video uh, syncs perfectly with this so it knows where I'm at in the uh, playhead in the video uh, and if I play this back right now we should hear our sounds and there it is there's our sound okay so that is uh, how we sync picture and sound in Q Tractor uh, doing it uh, doing doing it this way. Now what we want to do is we want to add an instrument in here and we're going to have the uh, MIDI data um, control the instrument and instrument in LMMS. Um, and the reason for doing this is because again LMMS is a much stronger more reliable instrument platform than QTractor. Um, there's less chance of crashing. There's also a lot more control in LMMS in terms of applying effects and multi-tracking uh, and funneling down to mixing channels and mixing buses uh, without sacrificing um, performance. Uh, in QTractor, things get bogged down really quick when you start adding responsibilities to the program. So this is the benefit of using an external um, instrument platform. Um, it's also why uh, professionals will do the same exact thing with proprietary software too uh, for the same, a lot of the same reasons. Uh, we will minimize this um, song editor window so we can see the effects mixer as well. I'm just going to add a channel down here so you can see how this is going to work. Uh, and I'll call this uh, strings. So this is where we're going to mix down our string instruments. Uh, so whatever string instruments we put in here will come to this channel. And I'll add an effect right away. Type in, I'm just going to minimize our video, get it out of the way. Type in reverb. And uh, I like to use the CAF reverb. This is the LAD, uh, LADS, uh, a, LADSPA uh, format, not the LV2. And uh, I like the room size. We'll leave that. I'm just going to bring up the wet amount and bring down the dry amount. I like to keep these in proportion consistently. And that keeps uh, the um, volume levels consistent from track to track by doing that. So. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it that way. Let's add an instrument over here. So I'm just going to add a uh, sound font. So I'll put in a sound font player and we'll navigate to find a sound font. Uh, and I've got some string sound fonts here. We'll use this sound font, Super Strings. It has a few um, um, uh, collections of strings that I've made and put together. And uh, we'll use this one down here, Super Tone Slow. Um, on top of this, I'm going to add a stereo enhancing effect just for this track, and I wouldn't do this for every track necessarily, but uh, maybe this one, just to give it a little bit of a wider depth, depth, because this is very mono, and I want it to sound like a section. And then over here, I'll turn this up just about halfway to widen it up. Okay, so that will then feed down to this channel if we assign it. So on the instrument, I want it to come to the effects channel 1. Okay, now the MIDI, the MIDI information. Uh, and if I play on this, so hear it now. You may not hear this right now because this is probably coming through the sound card, and we need it to be coming through Q Tractor. So I can hear it, but you might not. I'm not sure if it's being recorded. I'm going to come back over to Q Tractor and hit uh, F8. Uh, sorry, hit that again, F8. And what I want to do is I want to assign um, LMMS to come back to QTractor. So if I look in the MIDI uh, section here, rather in the audio section, uh, LMMS is up here. I don't want the master output on LMMS to be coming to the system. So what I'll do is I'll click on uh, LMMS, I'll click on system, and I'll hit disconnect. What I want is I want the master output to come to the QTractor uh, master in. So I'll select LMMS and QTractor and hit connect. And then it will now bring my sound into QTractor. So now, if I play on this instrument, you should be hearing it in QTractor. Uh, and if we look at that, if I hit uh, very quickly F9 to bring up the mixer, if I play, you can see that we're getting some some input here. Um, now we will run into a loop 
problem later on when we go to bounce out, and we'll talk about that in the next section of the tutorial. Uh, let's uh, assign a, a, um, a MIDI track to this so that we can control it. So what I'll do is over here we're going to add another track, and this is going to be a MIDI track. Uh, and again, I could change the colors any way I want. I'll just leave it the way it is uh, for, for time. And I want to make sure that this says Channel 1 on there. And I'm going to call this uh, Slow Strings and then hit OK. So this is set to MIDI Channel 1, no instrument because I'm not using an instrument plugin over here. I'm just using the MIDI data. Now I want this to go out to a bus that will be seen in LMMS. So what I'm going to do is click over here and change my bus name. I'm going to change this to LMMS uh, and actually I'll probably call this 01 LMMS. Now I could make more of these. I'm going to hit update to change that. I could make more of these as I need more instances of LMMS. Uh, once you run out of 16 run through 16 MIDI channels, you would need to open up another instance of LMMS and then uh, bring in those, uh, uh, route those instruments through this second bus, okay? So right now I want everything from this track and the subsequent tracks up to 16 channels to come through uh, 01 LMMS. So if I close this out, you can see that by default it automatically updates that. So my MIDI data is going to come out through this bus and I want LMMS to see that bus. Bus. So if I hit OK over here, I now have a, a channel set up there. And I'm going to go back to my uh, routing. And this seems convoluted, but once you understand how signal works, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm going to now assign my Q tractor output on the on the MIDI side rather, my Q tractor output LMMS bus here to the LMMS in. Now, I do have a problem here where I'm not seeing my LMM. Oh, I know why. Check this out. So we can't see LMMS over here right now. The reason is because I have not enabled MIDI input on this instrument. So if I go to the MIDI tab, what I want to do is hit Enable MIDI Input, and then I'm going to set this to Channel 1. Okay, so I want the channel 1 over here and this bus out to meet up with my channel 1 over here. Uh, so that signals coming through channel 1 will drive this instrument and this instrument only. So now I can select LMMS over, over here on Q Tractor, that bus, and then select over here the instrument, Super Strings, and hit Connect. And now what I can do once I assign my MIDI keyboard is I'll be able to play from Q Tractor through LMMS and the sound will come from LMMS back to Q Tractor to record. Um, let me assign my keyboard very quickly. I have my keyboard up here. I'll select my MIDI keyboard and then I'm going to go to Q Tractor and select the LMMS bus because I want the MIDI keyboard to drive that. Not LMMS directly, but the bus. I hit connect. And now from this point, so long as I have my track selected, I should be able to play on my MIDI keyboard. So I'm playing right now on my MIDI keyboard and it is actuating the instrument over here. Okay, so now what I can do is I can uh, start to score a picture if I want to. I can turn on my click or my, you know, whatever the case may be. I can, I can change the tempo of my measures up here. These numbers represent measures. I have uh, measures here and uh, also uh, meter. I can change that. I can make uh, places where uh, that will change uh, measure to measure. Uh, by changing the tempo and changing the meter. Uh, and I can make my hits line up by doing that directly in Q Tractor. So if I hit uh, play right now, uh, rather if I arm this to record, and I arm record up here, I'll just uh, s call this something, hit OK. And uh, now I hit play, I'll see my video playing back and I'll be able to record in and, and I'll hear my sound. So this is playing back. can hear I can hear my effects as well
So I can record my in, my my uh, input from my keyboard, and now if I go back and play this, uh, it will play the instrument just as I've recorded it. Move ahead here, and I I get my playback to come back again. Uh, if I want to make sure that my MIDI signals have stopped when I hit stop, I can hit this here to stop MIDI signals, and I also need to on LMMS often hit play and then stop and that will stop all MIDI signals uh, from coming through. So you know composing is just a matter of adding additional instruments again you want to add an instrument make sure it's set to the right channel add an instrument over here make sure it's set to the right channel uh, and enable the MIDI input uh, make sure that you route it over here um, I find that uh, what you can do when you go open up the session again you can just click on the uh, uh, MIDI bus output and then select the top one and then hit shift and select the bottom on your list once you've piled up a bunch of instruments and hit connect it will connect all of them all at one time so uh, sometimes when you save a session and then reopen it you'll find that these connections have gone away and you just need to to uh, reconnect them very quickly before you work it just takes a couple seconds uh, once you understand the routing um, most of the audio connections uh, retain uh, once you save um, but the MIDI connections can get a little bit strange. So anyway, that's how you set up um, QTractor and LMMS and XJDO to uh, work in uh, real-time scoring to picture. Uh, next, we will look at how, uh, once you have everything put together, how you can mix that down to a final uh, output. And also I'll talk about some of the uh, techniques with uh, creating specific channels that do specific things. Uh, you're also able, actually before I move on, I should show you one more thing. Um, uh, QTractor does automation as well. So uh, you can automate uh, the knobs and faders in LMMS by assigning MIDI controls to them. If you look up here, for example, on the string instrument, on the volume knob, if I right click, it says here connect to controller. So if I click on that, let me get my video out of the way, you can see that I can set my channel to channel 1 because that's the instrument that I want to control it. And if I have it set to auto detect, it ought to be able to pick it up. Uh, let me see very quickly. If I click here and hit see here very quickly slow strings volume and hit play so that it's going to play back the volume um, if I open up the mixer and I grab the volume for slow strings you can see that it automatically picked up on controller 8 so controller 8 controls volume it's actually controller 7 if it's numbered 0 to 127 uh, LMMS uh, goes 1 to 128 so it's controller 8 over here and as I move this um, it should uh, move the volume over there so if I hit OK and then I move my slider you can see what's happening uh, over here that the volume is moving now what I can then do is I can assign uh, over here and a volume envelope by creating a curve uh, if I come in here to uh, edit this uh, change my mode very quickly right click da, 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 select mode automation and if I uh, click in there and click over here and make a curve so what will happen is then as the playhead arrives at that point you'll see that it will control the volume knob over here so if I hit play uh, you should see you see the knob moving so it's being driven by MIDI data over here through this controller so pretty pretty powerful um, capability here uh, uh, mapping MIDI uh, from QTractor into LMMS uh, and again best of both worlds you have a very stable instrument environment with very good mixing capabilities and a whole effects mixer down here and then you have a very robust uh, uh, MIDI environment uh, that has uh, intuitive kind of functions uh, that that are a little bit better for film scoring and scoring to picture than what you find in LMMS especially given that LMMS doesn't have a way to sync
uh, so whereas Q, Q Tractor does. So anyway, that's the basic setup. That's how you uh, operate controllers and MIDI data in Q Tractor and uh, sync them up with LMMS. Now let's take a look at the project itself, and we'll talk about mixing down, uh, and then after that we'll talk about mastering and final mixing.